afternoon. We're going to do an introduction to Singapore math. Um, just to raise of hands of people that actually know something or have been to a workshop about Singapore math before. Wonderful. I'm going to give you a little bit of background information and just a few of the um, strategies that are used with Singapore math. Singapore math is actually the curriculum that was um, designed and designated by the Education Ministry in Singapore. And a lot of times we use the term Singapore math interchangeably, but it is actually the primary curriculum for primary schools there in Singapore. And uh, Singapore math gained national, actually worldwide recognition when they scored number one on the TMIS, which is an international test. Um, and um, let's see, in 1999 they scored number one, the U.S. scored 19th on the list. So it just kind of gives you an idea of where we are on there. And there's a link at the end, at the very back of your packet, there are some links if you'd like to know more about the team is, who administers it, exactly who it is that's tested. Okay, and this is just a little map just to kind of give you an idea of where Singapore is at. Um, Singapore is at the southernmost tip of the Malay Peninsula. It consists of the large island of Singapore and 58 smaller islands. And when you look at this on the larger map, you can see Asia. Can you see where Singapore's at? It's tiny. And this really plays an important role into their curriculum, why they designed their curriculum, what they had in mind. They needed economic survival. They needed to, um, you know, use their natural resources. And when they looked around, they really didn't have a lot of natural resources. So they said, what about our children? Our children are our natural resources, and we really want to take an interest. We want to make them number one. We want to do everything that we can to equip them and... Um, and so that's what they've done. And they put all of that energy and those resources and that thought into their curriculum. And this is um, just a really great quote that I found as I was researching for this workshop. The, the mathematical literacy. The capacity to identify and understand the role that mathematics plays in the world. To make well-founded judgments and to use and engage with mathematics in ways that meet the needs of individuals' lives. So really have some meaning to your life. If you can take what you learned in the classroom and you can apply it in the real world, you can apply it at home, you can apply it with your, with your friends, and you can use those problem-solving skills, then you have mathematical literacy. It's not just the manipulation of addition and subtraction and those kinds of things. It's really applying that knowledge. Um, just a few things that I want to cover really quickly. Teacher training in Singapore is very different than it is here. You are not considered a master teacher until you've had what, at least five years of experience. You work closely with a mentor and you are monitored. Whereas in the U.S., we graduate, we come into a school we may or may not have a mentor around. Um, the curriculum content is very different than what we have here in the U.S. Christy, could you grab that set of books that I just had? Um, the second grade curriculum for math actually consists of these two books. This would be your first semester and your second semester, first and second. This is it for the whole year. And the difference between this curriculum and what we're doing now is the actual um, idea of mastery. A lot of times we cover, 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 we hit the skills, but we don't necessarily have mastery of those skills. And so this is very highly concentrated, very centralized um, curriculum, and it's based on prior knowledge. What you learn in kindergarten, you, you're going to need it for first grade. You're going to need it for second grade. It builds as it goes up. And feel free to look at those books. Um, the student attendance, well, the students who attend in Singapore, their parents have a vested interest in their education. They're purchasing those books. The books in Singapore are consumable. And the children use them, and the parents purchase those. And here's just a couple of interesting facts. In Singapore, they have 92.5 literacy rate. They speak eight different languages that are identified. Um, and the math is taught in English. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine coming in every day and teaching math in a language that's not your native tongue? That's interesting to me. And also, the literacy rate in the U.S. was 93% when I was looking. Just some things that I came across. Um, this is a research-based curriculum. The pedagogy has research written all over it. 
It focuses on mastery of skills, depth of understanding, and metacognition. Teaching children to really stop and think about what they're doing. Explain those ideas. Tell me how you got the answer. Important research and theorists that, um, that were used in the founding of this curriculum are Skimp and Brunner. We'll talk just a little bit about those in a minute. This is the scope and sequence of Book A that we were just talking about. And just take a second to just skim over these. These are all skills that we're teaching. They're all skills that we're teaching now. We're teaching them in kindergarten. We're teaching them in first grade. We're teaching them in second. Teaching them in fourth even, right? And it seems like that we're not getting it because we're skimming. We're losing some children as we skim. We cover the content, but we don't necessarily have that mastery. Whereas with this curriculum, they really focus on the mastery. And here's book B, 1B. I think this is interesting, multiplication. When they introduce multiplication, they don't introduce it as an abstract idea with a sentence that's written out, 4 times 4 equals 16. Instead, they're using manipulatives. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. Okay, this is just a break. So take just a minute and take a look at this. You, it looks like a tic-tac-toe board, right? All right, can you move three of the sticks and create three squares? Go ahead, try to draw it out and see if you can do it. 